It has been two years, two years since I stood on this stage, two years since I've been in this red circle. And you guys, it might have been a lifetime ago. I remember all of this. I remember putting my hands together, concluding my talk about what it was like to spend 28 straight days alone in a room in Guatemala in pitch black darkness. A room where I figured out that pain was the greatest teacher that none of us want to learn from. Literally, I walked off of this stage, I went right over there, and I collapsed right into Kimberly's arms, and I started weeping and sobbing and shaking uncontrollably at the release, at the relief, and oh my God, I'd taken my heart, my soul, everything I had, and I left it right here in this red circle. Now, a couple days later, I sat down to write Kimberly a thank you note. I said, do you remember sitting with me at the beach and you said, I am in the middle of my dreams coming true? She said that to me, folks. She said, Traver, I am in the middle of my dreams coming true. It was one of the most beautiful sentences I've ever heard a human say. I got back to my note. Kimberly, I am not in the middle of my dreams coming true. But I have a feeling that last Saturday night on that stage in Santa Barbara, they started to come true. So thank you. See, a couple days later, I was there in the midst of a group of men, right? And before that, before any of that happened, before any of this, before any of it, I wasn't a speaker, you guys. I wasn't a public speaker. I was a CrossFit coach and an acupuncturist, right? I taught people every day, swing a kettlebell, and I stuck needles in their butts. I wasn't a public speaker. And then all of this happened, and I walked off of this stage, and something really unique started to happen to me. I got asked to speak at conferences, at workshops, at gatherings all over the world. And then it got weird. Men started reaching out to me. Men started asking me about pain. Men started saying, I want to learn how to use pain in the same ways you talk about. Men who didn't even know they had a right to be in pain. Men who didn't know who they were, had heard a hundred times, we don't need you. Men who didn't even know what it meant to be a man today. I thought, wow, why are these guys contacting me? I'm the acupuncturist with the kettlebell and the needle in the butt. What are they contacting me? And I took a look at the civil, civilized world. I thought, oh my God, this is heartbreaking. I see an epidemic of unexpressed pain, especially in men hurt men. I see an epidemic of unexpressed pain. And this, this went across the board, folks. This was black men, white men, straight men, gay men, rich men, poor men, tall men, short men. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. I took a look at that civilized world, and all I saw was pain. I saw a society that demanded men be vulnerable, but yet strip them of the very strength needed to provide a foundation for that vulnerability. I saw hypocrisy, and I saw hurt. Now this next part, this isn't new, right? Hurt people hurt people. You all know that, don't you? Hurt people hurt people. But this is what I figured out. Hurt women. Mostly, mostly, you hurt yourselves. Hurt men, we hurt and kill women. We hurt and kill each other. And we hurt and kill ourselves. And we're doing that last one in record numbers. Suicide is just one of many of the deadly male privileges. And it's not just statistics who are dying, is it? It's not just Excel spreadsheets. It's not numbers. 
It's fathers, sons, brothers, husbands. It's real men. And so I took my idea that pain was the greatest teacher none of us want to learn from, and I shifted it to pain is the one leader most men are too afraid to follow or don't know how to follow or don't even know they're allowed to follow. And so instead of asking them to follow their pain, I asked them to follow me. And I created a movement for these men, the Man Uncivilized Movement, a movement to inspire a million men to, ex- to change the way they express their masculinity by taking first what we are shunning in society, the primal strength, the power inherent in men, the notion of provision, protection, and leadership, that primal notion, taking that, and then coupling it with the deeply heartfelt, conscious, space-holding, divine masculine. The primal and the divine. Strength, then consciousness, together. And now, let me address the shaved head white male elephant in the room. (laughs) Right? I get it. I get it. I get your emails. I get messages from people every week who take one quick look at me, see, oh, you work with men, and then send me their hate. And I get it, folks. You throw a, pack of, a pair of khakis and a white collared shirt on me, and I am the poster child for every alt right, angry male movement in the country. But that's not me, and that's not my movement. And if anybody thinks what's going on up here is a political statement, This has been (laughs) trying to make the best of a bad situation since my 20s. (laughs) It's not me. It's not my movement. My movement first provides a space for men to unapologetically cultivate and celebrate their wildness while immediately demanding that we take responsibility for our hurt and the pain we're putting out into the world. It teaches them to dive deep into their wounds, to stand in integrity, and to know that they are needed. My beautiful brothers, you are needed. You are needed now more than ever. Now, when it is civilized for a man to be addicted to opiates or to put a gun to his head, rather than reach through his isolation to someone and say, I need help. I don't know what to do. I know that, folks, because I've done that reach. I've made that call. See, when I got asked to speak here, the first thing I said was, no way. No way. I can't get up on a stage. I was in such a bad place personally In very rapid succession, I had just lived through a miscarriage that led to a divorce, that led to a business partnership breakup, all in a very short amount of time. And so when I got the call, I said, no way. But then I heard this tiny little whisper that said, what if you do it? What if you get on that stage? What if you leave it all there? What if you dare the wild unknown? Now, when it is more civilized for a man to spend his Friday night downstairs in his basement in front of his computer screen with his pants at his ankles than it is for him to be upstairs risking real intimacy with his partner. Now more than ever, gentlemen, we are needed. Now when it seems to be, is it just me? Or does it seem to be that we being civilized as men and women, we are at war with each other? With this finger pointing and blaming and perpetuating this us versus them mentality that all it does is divide us in the name of progress. Where's the compassion? Where's the empathy? Where's the kindness? Where's anything that brings us together? 
Now, gentlemen, it is not the time for us to step aside or to step down. It is time for us to step up, to rise up and to bring our brothers with us. It is time to demand more of ourselves and more of the men next to us. I get it, it's not time to stand on a wall with a spear anymore. Like we're not needed for that, that's done. But what is needed is for us to be present, for us to heal ourselves, to stop putting pain out into the world and to own with a heartfelt ferocity that the only thing toxic about masculinity is the culture that's trying to turn it into something it was never meant to be. The men are no longer lost. The boys, boys are no longer lost. Society doesn't know what to do with a modern man. I do. We uncivilize him. And you guys, everything I have, everything I've done, everything I'm doing, it all started right here. It started because I listened to a whisper that said, get on that stage. Do it. Dare the wild unknown. My name is Traver Bohm, and two years ago, I walked right out here with my heart pounding and my hand trembling as a first-time TEDx speaker. And today, I am walking off the leader of an international movement, changing the face of masculinity forever. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt that thanks to the opportunities I got from Kimberly and Mark, I am smack dab in the middle of my dreams coming true. Thank you.